Hi, everybody. I am back. I'm finally back. I know it's been going on six months since you guys last saw me do a video, and I am here to explain everything that happened, what's been going on with me the last six months, and ouch. And uh, I'm sorry, this is my little buddy here. Many of you who do not follow me on Instagram may not have met him, but this is Tully. This is the new addition to our family, and he's in the teething stage, and it hurts very badly. But um, I just wanted you all to meet him. Can you say hi, Tully? Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Yeah, you're not going to look at the camera? Right in there. Look at that. Look at that right there. Yes. <laughs> he is a squirmy little pup. He is well on his way to eight pounds. He's going on 13 weeks old. And he is doing well with his potty training as long as I don't hesitate in getting him outside, which I need to do very soon because if I don't, he will pee on my floor. So I'm holding him in the meantime so that doesn't happen. Uh, he does sleep through the night, although I don't. So I usually get him up to go to the bathroom when I go to the bathroom. Um, he's potty trained for outside and inside at this point. Um, we have trained him to go outside during the day, and then at night he has a place in the shower that he can go if he needs to go to the bathroom. We have a potty pad in our walk-in shower, and if he has an emergency, he will run to a bathroom to try to get there. But if we don't understand what he's doing and we want to catch him because we think he's on a warpath to do something he shouldn't do, that's when he has an accident because, like that happened last night, I didn't understand it, and I felt so horrible. Now, on to me. Um, you all know about my all of my calamities last year when I broke my ankle, then I broke my foot on my other foot, then I had to have the knee surgery to release the nerve because of foot drop, excuse me, and um, then at the end of the year last year, I broke my second metatarsal on my left foot, which is the one I broke the ankle on. I um, didn't have drop foot, although I have had it been experienced a little bit of drop foot in my left foot, so I have to make sure that I do not cross my legs at all, because crossing my legs is what is causing my problems, I think. So anyway, um, you stay here. You know what? I'm going to pause the video and take him outside, and I'll be back. Some things never change. I had Tully. I keep wanting to call him Diesel. I'm sorry if I do that. I don't mean to. Um, I took him outside, and the Amazon guy pulled up. So I got two packages here. Do you want to see if Tully is learning to open packages? He did a little bit at Christmas, but he was only... Seven and a half weeks, no, eight weeks old at the time. So, hey, don't chew on that. That's leather. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around. This could be forever, or I may just stop it. So let's see if he will open gifts. One thing I also wanted to explain was that last year I went through a lot and really didn't take the time out to grieve that I needed to grieve. Um, my father died April 5th. Uh, that was difficult. I had been taking care of him at home, and we were together right up till the end. And then um, in May, I broke my left ankle, and then by the end of May, broke my right foot, had the funeral for my father in between those two, which were about 10 days apart. Then after that, I had to have surgery on my right knee to repair the nerve that was causing the foot drop in the house that Jack built. <laughs> that caused my fractures. Then I had that cardiac event and a cardiac cath. Then uh, the wedding that I had been planning that was stressing me out totally because I did it all. And then um, after that, by the end of the year, I broke my foot again. So all those things also helped to compound the whole reason that I had left YouTube for a short period of time. But since I'm back now, I will get an art video out to you very soon. Tully, would you like to open a gift? 
this has a hard, hard packaging inside, so I don't think you can chew. Well, his little puppy teeth can't chew through it anyway. You want to get that? How do you tear that open? Open it up. There you go. Open it up. Get it. Get it. You're going to open it? You're lucky I'm letting you do this. And I, I totally agree with the sentiment here. I'm so happy we found each other, too. Oh, you're just going to teeth on it, aren't you? Okay, let Mommy try to open it, okay? I'll help you. Okay, can you pull on that the rest of the way and get it open? I think we could be here all day. Okay, we'll save that for another time, and we will practice, okay? So, well, anyway, I will continue on with my story, and then we will open up what I got. Um, so, I was going to go out to my studio today. I have it all warmed up out there and everything, but it's just so hard with him, and I'm working on some classes, so I'll get to that in a minute. So, anyway, back to my, I broke my foot by slamming it into a toy box, an antique toy box, which was my father's. My grandfather had made it for him. No, great-grandfather. His grandfather made it for him. So it was made in the early 1900s. It is heavy, and it's in my laundry room. I use it to put all my scarves and gloves and hats and stuff in it. And uh, anyway, there's a heat grate there, and my husband thought it was too close to the heat grate and it would obstruct the heat. So he nicely moved it over about mm, 12 to 16 inches, which is right into the entryway. And I come down the hallway in the dark. It's a dark hallway anyway, because it's a northern exposure with an awning from our screened in porch. And I walked right into it and just like compressed my foot. My second toe crushed it was totally displaced, and my toe now is on an angle. I cannot bend my foot yet. It's only been a month, and I'm not wearing my boot like I should be um, because it's a pain in the ass. I hate wearing those damn boots, you guys. So I'm just, I'm not in pain. I'm careful not to do a lot of this with my foot, and I can't curl my toes down anyway. So, So that's where I'm at with that. In the meantime, I've been having, since last year, many of you know, I've been having a lot of numbness in my hands, tingling. Um, it had been spreading finger to finger to finger, getting worse and worse and worse, and I thought it was my neck. So after I had my back surgery and went in for my follow-up checkup, I told my surgeon about it. That was October of 2021. I told him in November or December of 2021 and I've been doing this for a full year. Well, it's gotten to the point where it's gotten very bad. I lost use of this muscle in my thumb. You can see I have a caved-in spot here. It just caves right in. This side, it doesn't do that, but this side, it's caved in. It's concave. So I don't have full range of motion of that hand, but I have a lot of arthritis in this hand anyway. My surgeon had done neck x-rays, and he said, Sharon, I see some more arthritis there, but you're not to that extreme, and there doesn't appear to be any obstructions. So I was like, okay. So I let it go, but it got worse and worse. So I was at my neurologist's office for my headaches, and she decided to do an EMG, found out I have degeneration or denervation, which is denerving, of my nerves in my right hand and my left hand is mild but this is moderate to severe so I need to have carpal tunnel surgery of all things thank god it's not my neck but I, I'm going to have to have surgery the end of March on this hand and then I have a trigger finger here which has been a problem for for um years and yesterday I had it injected for the third time he said he needs to do surgery on that. But I can't have surgery on both hands at the same time. I'll be bandaged up, um, although I've been there with two broken arms before. <laughs> so I'll have this done, and then down the road I will have this done. I'm hoping I can buy myself time until next fall or winter before I need to have this done because I'm left-handed, you guys. 
and I want to be able to paint and write and all of that stuff. Playing harp is going to be an issue. So while I'm having this hand heal for about, it's going to take a full six months, but um, about the first six weeks, I won't be able to use it much at all because of pain, he said, and everything, and healing. So I'll be doing left-handed exercises with my left hand, which is very challenging on a harp anyway. So... Um, that's my plan there. So in the meantime, my low back has been an issue again, which isn't really surprising much because it's going to be a forever problem for me because of my ankylosing spondylitis and stuff. So I have ups and downs. And right now I'm doing pretty good this week, which is amazing because two weeks ago I was on pain medication around the clock. I mean, a breakthrough pain medication. I have my regular medication, but having requiring pain pills around the clock just to get through the day. And it's a real strange disease because if I lay still, it increases my pain. If I'm in one position too long, it increases the pain. If I get moving, it increases the pain. Movement is supposed to help, but when you're in a flare, it doesn't help. So then I had to push myself to get at least 3,000 steps in a day. Um, but now this week, I'm doing good again. So who knew? So anyway, that's it with all of my health shit stuff. <laughs> and uh, the dog, of course, you want to come up again? is taking up a lot of my time. He he um, doesn't like to be left alone much. I'm trying crate training, which has been a, ouch, ouch, no, has been a struggle. So we are working on it, but I have not been able to leave him alone yet. So, and I don't want him to have the separation anxiety issues that Diesel had. His was severe. He had to go into a crate immediately after coming home because I had to go to work. It was like 2009. It was before I went on my disability. I went on my disability December of 2011. He was two. And then after that, he was with me pretty much 24 hours a day. Um, so anyway, I don't want to have the same issues. I'm trying to get him to bite on his own hands rather than mine. Um, I don't seem to have the same issue uh, so far with him, but he has been with me all the time. He loves to sleep on my lap. He actually loves to sleep up on my shoulder like a parrot, and he'll crawl behind me and like try to straddle both shoulders. It's really weird. Oh, we found the packages again. So he's been keeping me very, very busy, like 24 hours a day busy. It's like having a baby again. So I'm trying. So I'm going to get back into videos. That brings me to my next thing. While I was off, I stopped painting completely. I think the last I left off, I was working on pastels. And I got too frustrated and stopped. I wasn't in the mood to paint with watercolor. wasn't in the mood to paint with gouache. So I just stopped. I stopped. I burned out completely which I've never done before. So um, I started knitting again. I used to knit all the time. I hadn't knit in probably, oh, I don't know, eight, 10 years at least. I don't know. So I took that up and I started knitting sweaters and I knit a ton of sweaters. One of them, I shrunk down to baby doll size, or actually if I have a grand granddaughter, I'll turn it into a cashmere coat for her because it's beautiful. But um, I was sick when I felted it down to nothing. It's so heavy, though. It's like like a four, maybe six T toddler size or, or six girl size, whatever. Um, but it is so dense and so heavy that I don't know if a kid could tolerate that much weight on their shoulders. I don't know. We'll see. If I ever have a granddaughter, that's where it's going. But, um, and let's see, what else? I transferred all the data. I had to go to a You Break, I Fix It store, and they could not get it to work either. Samsung couldn't get it to work either. Verizon couldn't get it to work either. So um, my OTG just doesn't work. So we did a workaround. The guy did a workaround, and he said, 
okay, just use your smart switch. I, many of you might be familiar, like when you get a new phone, it'll say smart switch, and then it'll just transfer all the data over to your new phone, just like that. I mean, I don't pay for extra storage in my phone. I've been with the same carrier for 30 years, so I ran out of storage years ago, and I don't really have a backup, so I just use smart switch when I get a new phone. So anyhow, I did that yesterday, and just spent today taking off about 400 uh, gigs of space. <laughs> and, and I'm doing good now. As long as my external drive is okay, God forbid I lose that because I'd lose all of my diesel photos and pictures. I do have a bunch of them on my phone. And him, my father, everything. So I don't want to lose all that. But anyhow, um, yeah, so that's it. So now, what have I been doing with myself? Well, I've been trying to get back into the swing. Oh, Pat's home. Hang on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, now he knows I'm recording. Anyway, um, so I ended up... Uh, he's still trying to open that. Working on sketches and little paintings and stuff like that and I feel like my skills went way downhill and I know many of you wanted to see that work that I was doing and I did post a couple things on Instagram but basically I've been using my my um, do whatever sketchbook which is a uh, Luke term 1917 book I don't know if I say that right but that's what it's called and I've been using this for a couple of years for just this and that. Here's some of the old things that I had done. These were gouache paintings that I had done a couple of years ago. That was December 2020. Um, and then I switched to other stuff. I mean, there's some sheet. And always oh, getting in there. We're almost open. So anyhow, I've been I had worked on that. You guys remember I did a video on this one. But uh, then I started scribbling, and I'm going past all the paintings and stuff that are in here. But um, one day I'll give you a little sketchbook tour. So then I got up to where I'm at now, and this, I think, was the first thing I did, which was I started to do. I never finished it. That was the ugly phase, and I just stopped. That was with watercolor, Stonehenge. And then um, I started to do... Um, a hobbit house and got the door in, and then I stopped there and then I started working on trees <sighs> and I posted this on Instagram um, this first one is blue pencil then this one was just watercolor with a water brush watercolor with watercolor pencils with the water brush and then this was watercolor and ink with a real brush so I guess they're both real brushes, but a regular brush. But I want to start working on getting my line work straight again. I, I'm very wobbly. Um, I've been reading a couple of books and trying to get my drawing back up to par. I was doing contour drawings. Uh, that was of my feet the other day. Um, then just doodling and... Uh, let's see. And that's pretty much where I'm at right now, which brings me to the next thing. I've been working with watercolor pencil, with regular pencils, with pens, with you name it, with everything. But the two books that I've been reading, I've had, and I, you know, you just never get around to reading them. I have them on my Kindle. Uh, one of them is, let me get to the covers here so that you can see them. There we go. Keys to Drawing with the Imagination, uh, or with Imagination by Burt Dodson. This is an excellent, excellent book. I'm reading two of his books, actually. The other one is, um, I think it's just called Keys to Drawing. Yeah, Keys to Drawing. Whoops. With, by uh, Burt Dodson, which is also another excellent book so if you're trying to work on drawing skills it'll take you right through the very from the very beginning 
and he does exercises throughout the book. You can follow his exercises through the book. He suggests you follow them in order, but it's not necessary. Um, so some of them work more on uh, figure drawing and that kind of thing, and the other thing, the other one is more imaginative drawing. Which brings me to my next thing. I decided to start taking some classes. And I've been a member on um, a site called schoolism.com, I believe. And schoolism has excellent, excellent programs. He's in. Okay. Okay, baby. You're in. Just, okay, leave the rest alone. I'll take that. And he has disintegrated the paper. Oh, shoot. What's that? Oh, that's just the inside. Okay, he can disintegrate the paper. But anyway, I've been working on some of their classes, and what I like about their classes is their next level. You can start them as a beginner, but they work into intermediate and even into advanced kind of stuff. And what I really, really want to work on, I know my landscape painting will come back up to where I was and hopefully exceed where I was, but figure drawing and portrait drawing and that kind of thing, I've never been good at. And I want to learn it well enough so that it doesn't intimidate me like it does right now. So I'm working on that. Uh, another book that I have that I want to work on out of is called An Atlas of Anatomy for Artists. It's also an excellent book. Um, and... It goes into the anatomy, the muscles, the bones, all of that, which I know as a nurse, but in drawing them, um, how you get the shape of your arms, your legs, your back muscles, all of that kind of stuff. It takes it all into account so that you get the full shape. And so I want to work on getting that up to par. So right now um, I'm doing a schoolism class, which is called Deconstructed Drawing People. And which is why I've been working on hash marks and stuff in my book here and working on circles, doing circles, and um, what else did, have I been doing? Oh, hash marks, like I said, working on hash marks and how you use your wrist, your pencil, holding it in the different ways, which, you know, a lot of it I know, but it's a good reminder. And... Um, then I've been doodling a lot, like I said, doing things like that. A pencil drawing I did of this funky bird, a seagull. And that was around Christmas time. Tree roots I was working on. And anyway, so you get it. But, uh, oh, this is such a mess behind me. So, on to what came today. Uh, I decided, uh, I have, you know, mechanical pencils. And decided to get these other ones that have different colors um, on the outside they're all they're all different like this so they're 0.5 uh, millimeter and then I got colored lead so that I can put them in their corresponding color except for one. Uh, the gray one, I'll probably do purple or something, but or maybe turquoise, or I don't know. But anyway, I've got seven colors and six pens, so um, we'll see how that goes. So that's that one. And then this one, I don't know what I got here, what this is, but I don't know if I can open it either. Okay. Oh, I decided to try acrylic style gouache. So I bought Holbein's school set, which is an 18 color set. I don't work really much in acrylic anymore, but I thought, what the heck, I wanna try that. I don't wanna do full paintings in it, but at least under paintings would be, would be nice. And these are the 12 ml tubes, 18 colors. So when I, test them out. I will tell you what I think of them. But anyway, oops, there goes everything. I can show them to you. And uh, 
We'll see how I like them. No, no, Tully. No, no. I'm missing one. Shoot. I've got to find it. Oh, there it is. Good. Don't want to lose it while he's around. That's for sure. So that is pretty much where I'm at. So I hope to do, I'll try to work on an art video for later this week and get that out to you. Uh, we'll see how things go. But I'm back and I hope you're happy I'm back. <laughs> so I will talk to you soon. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. God bless you. Wanna say bye, Tully? Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>